Yo, they call me Lou, season two, baby. What's good? Season one was beautiful, man. We were really into some real deep, deep, beautiful things. It basically helped all of me help made me who I am today, man. Good, bad, all that other good stuff. And keep in mind, it's not about hip hop music. It's just, and I'm gonna get into that. That's a whole, whole, whole shit. But you're gonna just talk about all kind of shit, man. Business shit. I sold weed on Wall Street, you know, all, <laughs> just this shit, that Wolf of Wall Street shit, yeah, all that shit, I said weed, you know what I mean, but it was just dope experiences growing up in New York, man, and um, one of the things, I always paid attention, you know, I went to the Clinton, be with Clinton, I uh, went to Vanda, so I kind of always paid attention to just shit, you know what I'm saying, I would hear hustle. Not not necessarily regular street shit, but just business shit. So I had just got fed up, you know what I mean? And I wanted to get a job, man. So uh got a couple of jobs. Then the one job I worked started working at this mailroom. Now when you work in the and this is down in Manhattan, so you work in the mailroom, you know, you take the mail. So you hear. You in the break room, you hear them talking business, you hear them talking all kind of shit. You know, the receptionists, secretaries, you know, all that gatekeepers, you know that shit. You just learn. So later on, that came powerful later on in life. Me doing all that shit, me being a messenger, me going in all those buildings in Manhattan, delivering and meeting people and, and all kind of shit. And um, it, just, it just gave me where I could go back home and be in the hood, but then I could go, you know, I could go fuck with these people. You know what I'm saying? I could go sit at the same fucking table and shit, and they wasn't threatening shit. You know what I'm saying? It was it was this weird shit. So that was a beautiful thing. It just got me in. So two things: being a messenger, man, um, was just a dope. My parents wanted me to get get you know, but this to me it was it was dope. You and I wasn't a bicycle messenger. I would walk. I was a walk messenger. I'd take the bus and something. So you walk. They give you the tokens. You say them bitches. You know what I'm saying? Because New York, the blocks are like bam, bam. You know what I mean? They're not long. So you on 45th Street, next thing you're on, you know, you're on 30 something. So it's it's easy to walk that shit. But I think anything over 10 blocks, they would give you these tokens. So we would just stash the tokens, boom. Unless you had to go like the swim, far, far shit, you know. But stash some shits, go save lungs, you got $5, you get a bag of weed, you good at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So it was one of those jobs. So. People say, well, what makes your story, what makes you just all kind of shit? For instance, this one I'm going to talk, talk about now is shit all my life has just fell in my lap. All kind of just shit. So, um, this is fast forward. This is this is before 9-11, right? Um, so, you got, uh, I don't even know the, the year, but this is, hold on, hold on, pause, pause. Okay, so it was, it was um, uh, 2001, so that's summer, winter of 2001, right? So this is how the shit jumped off. I'm leaving Colorado, I had this job, dope job, I was supervisor in Colorado in the Springs at this this company, this telemarketing company that sold these magazines, so I was getting commission, I was, I was banking. So, so I smashed one of the workers, some shit jumped off, so hey, shit happens. And uh, <laughs> that's a whole nother shit. Damn. That's why it can't be one movie. It can't be one documentary. It has to be broken up like this to make this shit fit. So make a long story short, me and I have an affair. Shit jump off. I bounce. So just like I figured out a way to sneak on the Greyhound and shit, I already had worked for Metro North. All right, go back. That's the railroad. So there's certain railroad lane, deadhead, such and such, you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? So I figured out how to get on the Amtrak. So boom, I'm chilling, knocking out. You know what I mean? I'm back in the back, you know, like where the workers be, knocking out, chilling, eating all that good shit. So there's one particular shit. I go to the, um, where you smoke, you know what I'm saying? So I'm down there smoking and there's this white dude down there. Now, I don't know, for for, 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 for some reason, me and him just start talking and shit. And he was talking about weed or whatever. I'm like, damn, you got it. You know, he's like, damn, I got it. He wanted, I'm like, you know, back then, it was different to just light up on the fucking Amtrak. He used to bring the dogs. So, me and him hit it off. Now, it's wintertime, and he's going to New York. He's going to Wap, 
Wappingers. Now, I had already had a connection from Metro North of Beacon, so I knew that area, Hudson, I knew all that area and shit. Wappingers, Beacon, Poughkeepsie, all that shit. Newburgh, I knew that area. So I'm like, word, you know, so me and him chopping it up. And for some odd reason, I don't know what it was, a belt or what have you, I, I was doing the sag, not sagging on purpose, but I, I was going like this, pulling up my shit. So he says, yo, um, I don't know, I don't know. He says, yo, I got a belt. Me and my uh, uh, friend invented this belt that worked for that. So I'm looking at him like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, come on. So then I'm telling him like, yo, one time when I was working on the railroad, my belt broke and I took a bungee cord and I hooked it and hooked it and that held my pants up until, you know, I got to work. So he's like, yeah, it's kind of made out of a bunch of material. So now me and him is, you know, I'm intrigued about this shit. So he's like, yo, um, now at this time, what I'm doing, it was the same shit as the Amtrak. I really wasn't, I was just, I mean, same shit as the Greyhound. I was just riding and, you know, so I'm coming from Colorado, just fuck it, I'm going to chill. And I just, I had went to Cali first, right? So I'm coming from there, boom, went from the Amtrak to Cali. I went from Colorado to Cali and then Cali to fucking, um, uh, to New York, right? So me and him, this is the Cali to New York, New York joint. So he's like, yo, now it's a blizzard that night. He's getting off at, um, um, White Plains or somewhere, somewhere where the, the shit stopped not too far. So I'm looking, so I'm looking at this cat like, yo, I'm not with no weird shit. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> but at the same time, I <laughs> It's real nip life shit. They call me Lou. He said he got weed. He got this belt idea. I'm like, damn, shit, fuck it. I ain't, what the fuck? It's a blizzard. I think my, yeah, fuck it. Shit was going to be delayed anyway. Boom. Make a long story. Get over, go to his crib. Boom. He got weed. We light up. He shows me the belt. And he comes out. And, and this is it. He's, you know, so he's explaining this to me. And he's called, he says the name of this is the shock belt. So I'm looking at this shit. And he, he explains how him and his friend, uh, this guy named Al Scott, Alex Scott. Now, Alex Scott's son, his father is this was this late actor named George C. Scott. Uh, if you see, just Google it. He was in the, the most famous movie was Patton. He played this military to do Patton. But um, that was his dad and his brother's an actor as well that was on all kind of Law and Order and the movies with Julia Roberts, so, and then now the dude, Gus, Gus, okay, Gus is, I'm gonna break it down, Gus was the dude on the train, right, dude, Scott, Scottish dude, this dude, the dude, I'm at his crib, the dude living in Wapping, just be blazing out, shows me the belt, this dude doesn't have to work, his, his, mo his mother, dude, <laughs> his mother, he said, put it like this, his father, stepdad, he gets like, a couple of, not a couple, some G's, like a good amount every month in his account. Every month. This cat don't got to work and shit. You don't got to do shit. The cat got, he's, he's done. But the cat will work and dig. He works. He goes and digs ditches and, and not ditches like that in houses. And ref I mean, works. He goes and fucking works hard every day. And I'm like, damn, do you? So, make a long story short, we chopping up and he shows me. And I'm like, damn, how's this shit work? Now, he's explaining how Al came up with the idea. I don't know what made him come up with the idea. I think where they were more looking at skateboarders, you know. So they came up with the idea, uh, got the patent for the shit. Gus uh, threw, put in the money, put in the, investment, put in the money, put in the, investment 100000 into the shit. Boom. They opened a store uh, uh, up in upstate New York, Mark, you know, trying to do their shit. But they weren't businessmen as far as they didn't know marketing. They didn't know... They just, they had money, they had the product and they had the money, but they didn't have nobody to get them into the shit, right? So they had just bunches of these shits left. They had gave up, not kind of gave up on it. They had bunches. I'm like, yo, how many you got? So he's like, yo, that, I mean, like bunches. He's got a whole fucking storage full of these shits. So I'm like, yo, I'm looking at these shits. Now, this is how these shits work, right? Right? So you hook, you, 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 you hook this to here, come through, right? And you hook this to here. Boom, right? 
and then you adjust it with the slide. So if you want it looser, tighter, what have you, you can put it on the back, the side, and boom. So the skater is sagging. It was perfect. So I'm like, holy shit, my man, I'm tripping. I'm like, yo, this shit is fucking genius. Excuse me. I'm, 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 I'm bugging the fuck out. Like, yo, because I take off my, I'm like, yo, this, because I'm looking at it, back in the cats were sagging and all that shit or whatever, even though people don't like it, you see them walking like this. This shit here gave you the proper shit where you flexible, if you skating, if you just sitting, it's, it's none of this, it's none of the ridge. <laughs> Come on, man. So I'm like, yo, look, I'm good to go. Let me, so he's like, yo, I'll give you a bunch of these shit, see what you can do with them. So now I'm like, yo, I'm going to take these shits because it's cold, I'm going to go, I was originally going to go to, I think, Miami. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to go down there. So I, I, he gives me like maybe 50 or some shit. Some, no, for, okay, first I fuck with, New, for, oh, pause, pause, pause. Before I fit Miami, I'm like, yo, let me just take, let me see what I can do with some of these shit. So I go downtown, I go to Harlem, and I see everybody who I see kind of sagging or kind of, holding they shit up, and then girls who I see sisters or who chick, certain chicks with certain jeans, this shit used to poke out in the back. So I'm giving it to them, and they trying this shit on, and that shit is taking away that part. Everybody's like, yo, what, who, what? So I'm, I'm like, yo, so I'm selling these shits. But now it's more than just selling them because I'm not thinking short term. I'm thinking, yo, this is some major big shit that this shit could jump into. This is this is some shit. So I'm fucking, I go back, I'm like, yo, man, this shit, people is loving these shits. So we buy a video camera and I'm like, yo, let me go film shit and get people's response. So uh, he give me more, I go to Miami, same shit. Girls, people, dudes, white, black, young, old, they loving this shit. So I'm like, damn, I'm filming this shit. So we go back now, we start networking as far as, man, we need to, now they cut me in, legally. They cut me in, 35, 35, 35, we own this shit. We own this shit because they see that, damn, I'm the mouthpiece, I'm the marketer, I'm the one that's that's making this shit happen. You know what I mean? They ain't got to do shit. So we go, um, we set up some meetings and shit. I start cold calling, just cold calling. And that is going back to me going being a messenger, learning certain language, learning I, I got to get to this person to get to that person to get to the CEO. You know, I got to... It's, it's, it's some shit you got to get through. So there was one point we was talk, talking that um like a um infomercial type shit. So we went to Jersey, met with these people. Now, once again, these cats is not businessmen, not like that. You know what I mean? They white. The dude Scott, is, they both white dudes. I'm, I'm just saying. So we go and I did, we go to the first meeting at um one of Telebrands. I think it was a company in New Jersey. So Gus. The dude, he puts on a uh, light blue suit. So I'm looking at him like, dude. So I'm like, all right, you know, so we go. Now he, for some reason, I'm sitting at the desk, at the desk talking to the dude about the product and shit and what we're trying to do with it, right? So Gus is in back of me sitting back there. He pulls out the newspaper and starts reading it. So you hear this noise. So me and the man both look like, yo, and he's, so the dudes automatically like you can feel this vibe like yo well your partner over there is not in I could you know so I'm like dude we get out I'm like yo my man he's like oh I didn't I said bro all right no more meetings no fucking you know no I know <laughs> I know it's your money and the money was long listen they G's at a time whatever I needed boom G's at a time so now I finally get I start calling I, oh go to Fubu boom go to Sean John, go to all of these shits back in the day. And I finally end up cold calling and getting a meeting with uh, uh, this dude, Mr. Swartz, I forgot his name, um, the owner of Lux, right? Jack Swartz, hope, I think I got it right. Rest, I, I hope he's still alive, but Jack Swartz, right? Lux was the New York Lug Company, look look it up. Um, so I don't know for some reason, and, and, and this comes in from the telemarketing shit knowing how to get through the voice. All of that shit played a part of me getting to this 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 person. And I didn't realize that until he said this out of his mouth, right? So they set up the meeting. 
And how I call, I'm like, hey, this is uh, Joe Nipper from Nip Life. Uh, not even Nip Life back then. Joe Nipper from Shock, Shock Belt, something such. And boom. I like to set up so boom. The meeting. So they, I go down in uh, Manhattan, man. So they bring me into the office. Yo, so in the office is pictures of every rapper that been in the office, right? You see everybody. Everybody you could possibly name is up there. So you see the work is like, you know, looking like to see who I am. So they go sit me in this um, office room to wait for them. And the table is one of them long table, long ass table fucking room. So I'm in that bitch. They ask me that I want something to drink, think they bring me a Sprite. So he finally comes in with the second and she's like, hey, I met you as his personal. I'm like, hey, boom. So I go do the demonstration. You know, I tell him, hey, first of all, I say, hey, you know, um, my name is Joe, I want to introduce, I said, I'm not a, a businessman. He said, hold up, hold up. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, he said, no, no, what do you mean, but you're not a businessman? He said, you got to me, so you you got to know something. Don't you ever, don't ever say, you know, boom. So I'm like, all right, boom. So that boosted my confidence, like, yeah, let me stop trying to play, you know, let me, if I'm old, let me own this shit. This is, if I'm up, let me own this shit. And that's part of life, own that shit, fuck it. So, um, showing him and he's loving this shit. He's like, damn. He says, unfortunately, um, we're not doing too much with the power right now. And he said, you want royalties. You want, you know, money to keep coming in. He said, I could buy a bunch of them from y'all for bulk, you know, give them out with some shit, but you eat that shit. So he said, have you ever heard of Quicksilver? Uh, they make like, uh, skateboarder type clothing, beach, you know, I'm like, surfer shit. I'm like, nah. So he's like, I got a, um, a connection here. Let me give you a name and number and you, I'll tell her you'll be calling her and you know, y'all go from there. And boom, I'm like, all right. So then I had told him that I had went to, and this is a white guy. I said, I went to, John. he said, who else? I said, well, I went to FUBU. And he looked, he said, listen, I don't, I'm not saying this because I'm white. He, he, and he looked him dead in my eyes. He said, I'm not saying this because of white. This doesn't have nothing to do with me uh, being a different color. But they will steal your idea, bottom line. So I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, so I went back. I'm like, all right. So that, I remember that next day I went back to FUBU. And I'm like, hey, did you? And I I think I still saw the thing, and I'm like, hey, I want to put something else in it, and I just snatched, took that shit and bounced, man. You know what I mean? So, I get to, uh, next two days, get in touch with the lady. Uh, son, I forgot her name. Son, son, ah, ah, damn, I forgot her name. So, this is Huntington Beach, California. So, I get in contact with her, I tell her, you know, what I want to do, and I'm coming out there. Now, I come out there with, with their budget, boom. I get out there, I'm chilling. So I meet with them and I show them the belt. You know what I mean? Same boardroom type shit, they love it. They said, listen, now around this time is 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 August. It's late August, you know, like, it's around now. Yeah, it's around like now and shit. Wow, it's crazy. So, so I, um, I meet with them, hold on, they love it. They say they have three trade shows coming up and they would like to take it to the trade shows to show it off two overseas and one here. So they'll get back in touch with me. They said, well, what are you gonna do in the meantime? I said, well, they said, well, you you can stay out here. So I, they put me up at the La Quinta Inn and, you know, just paid. So I'm chilling. I'm in um, I'm Huntington Beach, I'm in Newport Beach. I'm just, yeah. Come on, man, come on, bro, I'm living good. That just fell in my lap, all of that, from just being on the train. Now I'm in the hotel, chilling, eating, chilling free, Lead, everything, shopping a belt, percent that I own percentage of now. You know what I'm saying? So um, they call me Lou, yo. So they uh, do all of that. They go to their trade shows. So they come back um, and they love it. They love it, man. They come with a deal. They want to. They want. I think 35 to go to. I mean, some percentage to the retailer. They got like 40 or something. We got. Whatever, you know, was, I'm like, damn. So we're in talks. Now, Gus, um, brother, uh, uh, lived, I think, in New Jersey, but worked at the Royal Trade Center. The little one of the little ones or something. So the plan was, they're gonna, I'm gonna meet with them, 
that um, Tuesday, I think it was, um, whatever day that was on, what day, what was it, a Monday or Tuesday? <sighs> I don't want to pause it. But whatever day, so they love it. And the deal was they're going to they're gonna uh, get the contract. Gus and them had agreed, hey, that's a great percentage. You're talking Quicksilver, it's going to be in their stores. I mean, it's just money. It's just it's a perfect marriage for us. It. Perfect. It's perfect. So uh, they're going to have a contract written up. I fax it to them. Gus's brother looks, overlooks it. When we sign a deal, we fucking pay. Bam. The night before I went to bed, I'm excited. I'm like, yo, only something major could happen to fuck this up. Those are my exact words. Words. Only something major could fuck this up. Went to bed happy. Boom. Chilling. Woke up that morning and went to the bathroom and I saw the news. Shit, you know, eh, war, you know, it's, it's commotion shit. So I'm like, yo, you know, I'm hearing the shit. So it's 9-11. This is 9-11 was the next morning when World Trade, all of that shit happened that morning of the deal. The morning of the contract, the morning, all of that happened on 9-11. So I think I'm dreaming because there's no way that this big deal we was just going to do this just, just ruined it. So, and I know I might sound selfish, but it just sounded, come on, man. You know, so I go downstairs in the lobby of the hotel. The people's out there. Everybody's crying. And I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck, man? Yo, so I call mom, you know, check on everybody, and I call, call Gus, he's, he's good, you know, uh, his brother was either late going to work, or then it was something where he didn't, he didn't, he was okay, so, um, Quicksilver was like, yo, we don't know, Sunny Ray was her name, we don't know which, where the economy's gonna go, we're gonna, it was a couple of days. So when they say, you want to chill, you want to go back home? I'm like, I'm going to just chill. So they paid for another two, three weeks or whatever. Um, then they called and said, well, due to the economy, they don't know which way they're going to go. And they're going to not go ahead with the deal and shit. So, because nobody really knew what was going to go on, you know what I mean? And to make a deal in the midst of that shit is it's crazy. So I stayed. Yeah, that was some shit. Stayed. Um, uh, in the hotel, and through that, I met somebody who, uh, I think I went to a church that evening, and they knew the, the, the church I went to, the, the guy who owned Hurley went to that church. So I'm like, ah, they make skateboarding. I call Hurley. So I'm like, man, let me try to shop that. And they were more studs and stuff at the time. And, you know, I, uh, it did have potential. And now, I mean, the, the patent probably ran out. They... Last I told to Gus was probably like 10 years ago, and he just basically gave me the pad, and I just, you know what I mean? I just got, it's one, it's one of those things, but there's a belt. If you go online, there's a belt out similar to it, but yeah, 9-11, man, the day the deal was supposed to go down. This is a shock belt. So they call me Lou, season two. Peace.